How many of you want to grow your business? Anybody here? I want to grow my business. And one of the things I realized in growing your business is, you want, you need to have a business plan. Right, Deborah? You need to have a business plan. You need to look at it from time to time. Nancy, do you have a business plan? Don't answer the question. But uh, if you don't, you need to have one. If you don't, you need to have one. So you all need to have a business plan. And the thing that really sets business, uh, successful businesses apart from others who are not successful, one, they have a business plan. And two, uh, if you're a realtor, you need to have a contact relationship management system, right? A contact management system. Keith, would you find a chair? No, no, I'm good. Yeah. All right. So a contact relationship management system. And I've had one for a number of years, and that is the thing that really took my business to a whole nother level. Because I didn't have to remember everything. You know, when I talk to a client and we talk about a particular subject, maybe I heard a dog barking in the background and they say, so who's that? And they say, oh, that's, that's uh, Shimmy. Okay, so now next time I talk to them, guess what I'm going to say? How's Shimmy? How's Shimmy? How's Shimmy? Right? Or maybe I found, I heard a baby cry and I said, what's that? Oh, that's my grandbaby. What's her name? Oh, her name is Adelphia. Adelphia. Oh, wow. So. Guess what, when I talk to her again, I'm gonna ask how's Adelphia doing? And I don't have to remember all those things myself. So you can take notes, all right? Then the other thing is too, you can send them information. We have great resources of information that you can send them, especially the information on properties that are active on the market. And guess what? Even if they're not looking to buy or sell right now, maybe they're not in a position to do it, or maybe they've been in the house for 20 years, and they say, I'm going to die in my house. And when they say that to me, what do I say? What does that mean? I would say, you put it in the will for your listing agent. <laughs> there you go, Wiff. Who's your estate attorney? <laughs> Talk to him. Right? Who's the heir of your estate? Who's the executor? Who's the trustee? It's kind of funny. But, you know, when they tell me they're going to die, I say, oh, okay. I'll wait. I'll, I'll, I'll Who's going to be handling your estate? Who's going to handle your estate, right? <laughs> so, anyhow, what I'm saying is that the contact management system will actually help you send out information, email alerts to your clients. Enjoy. Uh, joy. Forgive me. Okay. You are Joy, but that's not your name. Okay? Kit is going to share with you the essence of the system that we have in Southland Regional. And I want to ask you a question or two. How many of you know, what does it cost? Do you zero. have an idea? For what? What zero. does it cost to use the system? You say what? Zero. You say zero. Just my annual dues. That's what yeah. you're doing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Your annual dues. That's all it costs. Right? So as long as you're paid in full, right, your dues entitle you to use the system. So I want you guys to really step your business up to a whole nother level. You watch what happens when you start putting together a database, and I've asked all of you to put together a database. Last week I met with a good friend of mine who's an experienced agent, who I'll tell you a powerful story about, about her. A year ago this time, she uh, discovered she had breast cancer. A year ago, she had breast cancer, and guess what? She had to go have surgery. So she left here, she went to visit her, her friends back home and her loved ones, and she had surgery. And then she came back, and then she started having to go through chemotherapy and radiation therapy. And guess what, all during that time, she was still doing business. So all of you who tell me you're too busy, or you don't feel good today, or my stomach is upset, or I got a headache, or whatever, you know, I don't, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I don't. Because this lady was kicking butt. And guess what she did? When she was out of town, when she was having a surgery, she delegated her help. Uh, she asked Floyd to help her. She asked uh, Bonnie to help her. And we all stepped up and helped her where she could close transaction, even though she was recovering from breast cancer surgery. How you doing? Welcome back. All right, so what I'm saying is that last week I get an email from her. She says, Mel, I'd like to talk with you about that mentoring program. Now, this lady's closed several deals this year already. She had surgery a year ago, actually less, less than a year ago now, right? And she says, Mel, I'd like to sit with you and talk to you about mentoring. Anybody sit with me to talk to you about mentoring you at all? You did. You did. You did. 
But why is your hand going like this? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you know, short arms, short arms, people. Raise them up, man. Five, like this, right? I met with that, but it's not embarrassing. It's, it's called coaching, right? All I'm doing is coaching her. So she says, Mel, let's meet. So I sat with her. And she says, you know, my business is not where I want it to be. And I'd like to get your help. So I sat down with her and listened to what her concerns were. And I said, well, tell me how much money you want to make. So she told me. So I said, well, let's go look at your numbers for the last year. Let's look at your average closing. Let's look at what your average take-home pay was for the closing. So I just, we did that. I read through the numbers with her. And I said, OK, well, here's what we need to do. We need to put together a database. You have past clients, right? She said, oh, yeah. I said, do you know where they're at? Said, oh, yeah, I know their names. I said, this, this is what I want you to do. I want you to send me a list of all your past clients. I'm not going to do anything with the list. This for her. But I want her to go through the discipline, the exercise of actually doing it. This is hard because a lot of people talk a good game, but when you actually tell them to do it, it's like, oh, I got busy. Well, I don't need to do that. My stuff is already working. I already closed one deal this year. <laughs> right? You got 78 days left. You close one deal, you think you're on top of the world, right? <laughs> so here's what she did. She said, okay, I'll send it to you on Friday. So guess what? Saturday, I get the email. Mel, here's my list. So now, we're going to have a follow-up meeting. This is a lady who's closed millions and millions of dollars of real estate over her career. She was not too prideful, too boastful to think that she didn't need a little help. And guess what? I'm going to do my best to help her. Right? You all know who I'm talking about, Angelica Solomon. She's awesome. So when you see her, take your hat off for her because she's awesome. How about it for Angelica? <laughs> One last thing before we get started. Good morning, Candace. So good to see you. All right. Um, can you let her sit there? Absolutely. All right. Okay, so this weekend, uh, I got back from CAR and we had a great time. How many of you went down to CAR this past? Anybody had a good time? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Food was good. Learned a few things, right? Did you learn a few things? All right. Was it good? Okay, we had a great time. We took him off to lunch, uh, kid. Free lunch. How come you didn't tell me? Oh, you know, I saw you down there, too. I know. Oh, darn, we went on Wednesday. What day did I see you? Wednesday. Oh, my gosh. Oh. And we had lunch right before I saw you, too. Man, not yeah, bad. right before, yeah. I feel okay. bad. I feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyhow, guess what? Uh, Saturday morning, we have a board of directors meeting. We had a board of directors on Friday. So I get a I get a blast on my my text from uh, Bonnie, my scheduler and my assistant, and from James saying, "Hey Mel, uh, I need you to help me." Okay, what do you need? Well, you know when I when I took that listing, I didn't know quite everything. I did most of it right, but I leveraged you, and I've always told the agents, "Leverage me." You know what that means? Use me as your leverage. You know, you put something underneath something, you prop it up. That's called leverage. So I said, use me. So James said, I use you. <laughs> I use you as my leverage, Mel. And he says, Mel, can you meet with me? My client is going out of town. I really need you to meet with me. And I had all these other appointments scheduled. I said, James, let me try to figure out. Talk to Bonnie. And ultimately, I got my appointments rescheduled. And James and I went out to his new listing. Tell us about your listing, James. Stand up. Tell us. <laughs> pitch it. Pitch it, baby. Price, terms, location. Three bedroom, two bath. Um, address is 11230 Dominica Avenue, so it's over in Lakeview Terrace. Um, we're in the process of fixing it up a little bit, doing some touch-ups, getting it ready. Um, I'll be putting it on the MLS November 1st, so so we got a head start. So uh, what kind of fee are you charging, uh, James? What kind of fee am I charging? Broker's fee. Oh, 6%. Oh, so okay. I have a 6% fee. What kind of fee is that, James? 6%. Oh, and how much are you giving to the buyer's agent? 3%. Oh, James, man. Woo! How about it for that? <laughs> oh, God. Anything else, James? Uh, no. How about the price, James? Please bring me some buyers and we'll. What's the price? Five twenty-five. Five twenty-five. Uh, uh, 25. So yeah. What's the square footage and lot size, James? 1,450 square feet, and the lot is a quarter acre. Ah, so it's a big lot. 
It's a good it's size lot. lot, yeah. It's over there by a lot of horse property. Mm -hmm. um, sure, yeah. So the sellers are thinking that they'll probably attract someone from the, the local stables up there that'll want a house next to where they have their horses. So. Yeah. And it's great. It's a two two story. I mean, not two story. Two two car garage, and they have a carport which they built without a permit. But it's a very functioning carport that you can put a boat or some other stuff trailer underneath it. Uh, right, not a big RV, but a trailer because it has like about a seven foot uh, rise, I think, on the on the uh, on the roof line. But uh, James, how about it for James? <laughs> All right. So that uh, being said, we have a contest that uh, I forgot to announce. It started October one, right, James? Uh, so the contest will be for the the agent that has the most number of listings or transactions could be buyers or listings, most number of transactions, and the one that has a top volume. No leases counted. Top volume means like if James get four listings and they amount to $1,300,000 uh, and Deborah has two transactions that are listing on a buyer and it amounts to $1,500,000, Deborah will get the volume transaction if she's the highest one, so you'll get $500 for that. And James will get five hundred dollars for having the most listings, which or most listing in, in sales. So open escrows and listings that were went into effect effective October one, and the contest ends on our Christmas party day, December twenty third. So December twenty third, you will know. December twenty third is when we're having our last meeting of the year. Will be our Christ, our annual Christmas party. Okay. So then, James, you already got a head start, right? So. Any of you have gotten a transaction effective October 1 through December what? 23rd. 23rd. So hopefully that will motivate you. Last year you guys got put to shame by Rodney. Did I? I beat these like guys. Like three yeah. the North Street yeah. big car. I beat them, huh? Uh, yeah, you did beat them, right? Last year Rodney got the so prize. I'm the reigning uh, champ again, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to call yourself <laughs> No, you're the defending champ. <laughs> defending champ? Okay. Defend it, so you got to defend your title. Okay. All right, so already I'm all over my time. I want to now introduce my friend Kit Young. Kit and I have known each other probably for a decade, um, but, you know, she's beautiful. She is beautiful. And not only is she beautiful, but Kit will, one day we're going to work even closer together than we are right now, because Kit just tells it the way it is. She don't take no crap. Right? If you if you kind of make a bunch of excuses, she's not gonna go for it. Right? She is just a straight shooter. But she is fun, she knows how to have fun, and she's extremely smart. Oh, sorry, Gabe. Yeah, thank you, Rodney. Gabe, you've been here and you gave us a prayer, so you, you got anything um, you want to share? Uh, thank you, Rodney. Thank you very much. You made it before. For I brought these in, so this is just to hold your attention, ask questions at the end. There's there's one of these, and we have a uh, a flyer stand for your open houses kit. So ask two questions, whoever gets them right. <laughs> oh, okay. So this is actually really cool. My wife loves these. Um, if I ask trick questions and keep it, does that count? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 go ahead. They're, they're yours to do what you want. Um, thanks for the, t the floor. Um, just a quick reminder, those of you that have the Fidelity Agent 2.0 app, um, it's, it's now updatable in the App Store to so Agent 3.0. It, it, I would advise that you have it updated. It's got some great tools in there as far as marketing pieces that are attached to the app. That you can put on Facebook, you can text your clients, you can email to your clients. Um, the, the new look and feel of it is dynamic. Uh, there's a two minute video that I can, I can send now and you can blast out if you, if you want to take a look at it and what it can do for you. Um, the free app still gives you the estimates for the both buyer and seller if you want them. It's now it's now four ninety nine through December if you want to pay the one time fee to get all the extra. Four dollars and ninety nine cents. Four dollars and ninety nine cents. Four dollars and ninety nine cents. Okay. Yep. Used to be thirteen dollars. Um, so if you wait through December, January first, they can push back to thirteen bucks. Um, but it's well worth it uh, if you want to sit down with me and take a look at just the marketing things that you can do in the piece or in the app alone uh, for for five dollars, guys. It's it's worth it. Um, and it, there's no other app out there on the market like it. So. Take a look at it, it's in the App Store or Google Play Store, uh, and it's it's free just to try it out. If you want to upgrade, that's on you. Go ahead and do it. You don't need my help to, to download or set up a username and password, but I am here to help you train on it and just see what the, the value is in it. Okay? Um, title, Fidelity title, I'm here for your business. If something I can do for you, let me know. Okay. All right, how about it for Gabriel? Thank you. Thank you.
thank you. Riley, thank you for reminding me. So let me go back to uh, my intro for Kit. Um, Kit, um, I really appreciate your friendship. Um, you, uh, you, you've been here with us, educating us. She got to check out our new digs for the first time. Because last time you were here, we were downstairs, right? We were split. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. We have the office over there where the escrow office is at now. Right? So, um, Kit, uh, the floor is all yours. Um, can you guys give her a great hand? Okay, good morning, everybody. Um, I'm Kit Lowry. I'm the Today I'm going to be going over some contact management stuff. All right, but before I get into it, because I do only have a limited amount of time, and I'm going to throw this out at you. Mm -hmm. I would be willing, if you guys came into the office, to do a full two-hour training just for you. Okay. Did you hear that? Oh. So you need to gather together some dates okay. so that I can put you on the calendar, because it is much more involved. Okay. Now, before I get started, I do want to say Mel's absolutely right. You... There are items in the MLS, in the Matrix program, that are very similar to benefits that you guys wind up paying for. So, and in fact, Mel and I had this discussion not too long ago. I really encourage you to get to know what's available in the program before you start writing additional checks. Because I think you're going to find that a lot of what your MLS program can do is very, very similar to what you're going to wind up paying for. But it's really all about setting it up and using it. The, second, the third thing I'm going to say is before, in order for you to really understand how far you can push something, you have to push it. You have to play with it. All right? That's the only way you're going to find out what it's going to do. So if you have a personal email address, that is separate from your matrix program. I encourage you to set yourself up as a client. Set yourself up, yourself up using the auto emails because what that allows you to do, sending yourself emails, setting up searches, what that allows you to do is to view things as a client so that you have a really good understanding of what the client is using and what their frustration may be and also as the agent so you're seeing both sides of it okay so there's some handouts here if you guys want them there's two handouts actually okay yes please now now I'm going to go ahead and get started I'm not going to waste a whole lot of time walking in and doing all that. Thank you. Okay. The first thing that you need to do is to understand how to set up a contact. Yeah, I don't think it'll focus. I've tried it. Here it is. Is that better? That one. Yeah. All right. Okay. The first thing that you need to be able to do is to actually set up a client or a contact, exactly like Mel said. And how you do that is you have to remember to fill out every piece of information that you can. So we're going to start from the scratch here. And you do need to take notes because I don't know how uh, I'm kind of really getting into this more condensed. Okay, the, the first thing you need to do My matrix, when you're learning to use a program, do not rely on the drop downs. Because in a lot of cases, you're not seeing everything that's available to you. So click onto the tab so that it'll show you the complete screen. We're going to go ahead and click on the word contacts. because this is where you add a contact. You can import contacts from one of your other databases. So they can be imported. But for this class, we're going to stick to the very basics of what we need to do. To enter a contact, you're going to go down to the lower left-hand corner. You see it here? And you're going to click Add.
Now, the first thing that you're going to want to do is identify where you want these contacts stored because every one of the title columns anywhere in Matrix is actually a tool that will allow you to sort things in a different way. So, you're going to notice on the upper right hand corner of this little drop down screen, I've got a down arrow. This will allow me to go ahead and select a category that I want to put my client in. Is, are they a contact? Are they a seller? Are they affiliates that I work with? Are the some kind of handyman? You can customize, you can add your own contact category by clicking the word customize. Click save. And you've actually created a contact category. Go ahead and enter, first of all, their first name or their last name. And an email address. You notice on the lower left hand side of this particular screen I have something that says show all fields. By clicking that on, look at all of this information I can fill out for this particular client. So the first thing I encourage you to do is to enter all information, including something that they recently added, mortgage pre-approval. So you already know is this client, in fact, do they have, are they ahead of the game with stuff? Enter all of their information, anything that you can. Is there mandatory stuff that you need to enter? Yes, anything that's highlighted in Matrix is required. Great question, sorry about that. Okay, after you have filled everything out, Going back to what Mel had said earlier, you see this little box that says notes? This is probably one of the most important things you can do for this contact at this point. Is this a newer box? Because I don't remember that one on there. Or was that a if, if you have entered it on the fly and you haven't clicked the down, then you will not have seen this. And a lot of people don't click show yeah, all. Right, exactly. So, and that's what the purpose of this class is, to show you a few of these things. Okay, so in notes, this is exactly where you're going to start entering the stuff that you are going to become very personal with this particular prospect or seller, client, whoever. All right, so loves purple doors, whatever. Whatever it is that stood out to you that when you go into that contacts, file, you're going to be able to see, at least have a conversation, like Mel said, how's your dog Spot? How's your granddaughter? Do you still grow those purple flowers? Because everybody wants to be the star, and if they think that you're remembering them as the star, they're going to remember you as the star. Everyone likes to be the important one. When you're done filling everything out, you're going to go ahead and click Save. You will then have a new contact. Now, as a little side note, every time you create a contact in Matrix, you are also creating a cart. And the cart is where we store listings for specific clients. Now, all this stuff, as you see, just begins to expand. So we've added our contact. <coughs> Now, how do we go ahead and present ourselves to our clients or to our contacts? We're going to go back to the My Matrix tab. And we're going to click that on. We're going to go down to the word Settings and click it on. We're going to click on the words my information. Now, 
What Matrix has done is they've gone ahead and they have auto-filled information from your carrots roster. Now you all understand the difference between your membership roster and the carrots roster, right? I do. Well, of course you do. Carrots is the database that puts together information from approximately 12 other MLSs across the state of California. So, that roster information is visible to roughly 30,000 other agents. Just like you can see roster information for 30,000 other agents. And that includes all the information that is currently in Matrix. By the way, before I go any further, what's our MLS? Southland Regional Association. Oh, no, no, CRMLS. Business Net. CRMLS, dude. Okay. <laughs> Not good. <laughs> no, Chris Net. Uh, yeah. Chris Net is our MLS. And, and what's Matrix? Yeah, yeah, what's oh, Matrix? What's Matrix? The Holy Grail. The Holy Grail. You took my class. That's where you go. That's where you go to get all of your information. My matrix is the search program. And what database does it search? Now I can say MLS. No, forget that MLS. Carrots. Okay. This is what is automatically pulled from my roster. Okay, it is all the legal stuff. But this is also what, where I'm going to enter information that's going to make my header a little bit more personal. It's going to be information that's going to appear on my client portal, including any of my glamour shots I want to put in there. Okay, Woo, baby. <laughs> it's going to go ahead, and this is where the information is going to be pulled from. All right, now, let me make something very, very clear. This does not update your roster. This is a way of you personalizing your information to people that you're dealing with. But it does not update your roster. That needs to be done the old-fashioned way, paperwork to your association. Okay, there's no way around that one. Right now, what's auto-filled is my legal name, Kathleen Young. You're going to notice to the right of that particular line. There's a pointer there too. It's Can we little, turn oh, the sorry. light up too? Maybe that's a little better. Yeah. Oh, there we go. You see over here this column? Override. That says override. By clicking into that field, I can now go ahead and change some of the information. So I'm going to go ahead and make this a little bit more personal. Nobody knows me as Kathleen, so I'm going to go ahead and change this to Kitty. Kitty Cat. Kitty Cat. I'll leave I'll put that in there. Kitty Cat. I got lucky enough. I met another husband. I'm just knocking him off the list here. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead. I got to change this last name. Uh, oh, old. from young to old. Oh, okay. Uh, young to old. If, you, if, if you have an email address that you would prefer your contacts when you're sending them information contact you on, you can change it. Fill out everything. I can't emphasize enough. Do not leave any fields blank in anything that you do because the more ways people can get in touch with you, probably the better off it's going to be for you. Always put a tagline. See? In my case, it's I aim to train. And make sure that you have your Cal BRE number. Very, very, very important. You guys are laughing. <laughs> okay, when you're all done updating that screen, it shouldn't take you more than a couple of minutes, go ahead and click Save. It's going to tell you that your changes have been saved. The next thing you're going to do is click header and footer. And that's my beautiful daughter. Okay. You're going to notice up here 
on the upper left hand side it's going to ask me do I want to use a photo or not if you want to use a photo please click use custom photo you're then going to go ahead and click change and you will upload your photo from your browser this is all stuff that you guys you know should pretty well know then you're going to scroll, scroll down to the lower left hand corner and you're going to click select a package or select different package now this has gotten really confusing for people since they upgraded about six months ago. The first option says I choose not to use a header and footer. That is the default. So what happens is everybody goes through and fills out all this information and they don't select a header or footer and it still doesn't appear. By scrolling the pictures You can go ahead and select anyone you want by clicking on the left hand side, there's a little dot. You're going to click on preview. It's going to show you what your header and footer looks like. If you like it, if it's what you want, you're going to go ahead and click save. We have something new that's been added. Your mobile header. So this has been configured so that when you, you know, get these messages from clients or you see something, you, you see someone may be interested, you now have a way of actually having things go from your mobile device with a neat header on it and your basic information. On the right hand side, you're going to go ahead and all of these drop downs contain all of the same information. You just need to decide what you want to appear for each one. So I put my name in there, the name of my company, my email address, and you guys would probably want to go ahead and, you know, enter your, in fact, I would suggest entering your cell phone. I guess it's on there already. Okay? <clears throat> you can use a photo or not. It's all the same way. Just make sure that this information is exactly what you want it to be and you click save. See, this is all set up so that it'll fit onto uh, mobile device stuff. Because the need for that, in case you guys didn't know, there is a new mobile app um, that you can download and it actually works quite well. A few little bugs in it, but it's doing okay your portal information. Now this is really important because this is the information that's going to appear on the emails that you send to your clients when they open them. This is what's going to appear on the home page. This information is pulled from what you have selected on the right hand side. So everything over here is going to be auto-filled here. I'm going to put a picture with that kid, so that would have been nice. You'll see. It's coming. It's coming. <laughs> Rod, he's always ahead of the curve here on stuff. Say that little louder. Always <laughs> ahead of the curve here. <laughs> okay. Drop down. Now, there's something I'm going to point out. You're going to notice that in my particular portal, I have my whole name there. Kitty Cat Old. And it's at the bottom. Yeah. If I wanted to just put my first name in, I would do that by selecting that. Okay? This can be done in any order you want. Because remember, each of these drop downs contains the same information. So you can enter it in any order you want. The other thing that people get hung up on, I've noticed, is you can always go back and change it if you don't like it. So, you know, to do it until you, you really, really like it. I would suggest that you have information in every one of these fields. You can't put too much information out there. Click Save. Finally, 
you want to have a professional looking email address. Email signature. In your little handout for the basic email class, there is a template, there is an outline for what the National Association of Realtors suggests is a professional email signature. You're going to go ahead and fill it out, and by all means, if you have designations, don't be ashamed to add them. Because remember, this is the place where people, you're kind of, you're putting yourself out there, and you want people to see you as the guy. It's easy enough to do. To put the R in after Realtor. Realtor is always capitalized. You're going to go ahead and do parenthesis, R, parenthesis. Okay? When you're done? Is that for the registration? Yes. You're going to click Save. All right. So we've gone ahead and we've done all that. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to show you guys what the, what the portal looks like. So you guys have a clue here. Okay, this is because I've set myself up as a client. I actually have a client view. I'm going to click on this link. When your client first logs in, they're gonna, it's going to log in. The default is to open to the list of properties. Matrix identifies anything that's been added to the list by highlighting them in yellow. However, depending upon the resolution on certain people's computers, they can't always see that. So, and this is why I say you need to set yourself up as a client. Have your client click the box on the far left you're going to click Mark as Viewed. The reason you tell them to do that is because the next time they come in to look at the updates, you see up here where it says Display? Or excuse me. It's going to ask, Show Unviewed Matches Only. And by clicking that, it'll go ahead and remove anything that they've already seen. Oh, so they'll keep getting the same thing. They think they're getting the same thing, but what it does is it'll just say, you've already seen that, this is what you can, and it'll only default back to what maybe the three or four that were sent today. Mm -hmm. Okay? And that's an important thing. Now, what else can your client do from this port, this portal? I'm sorry, how do you get there? You, you can't get there because oh. I'm, this is a client. Oh, okay, okay. I'm using this exactly as a client so you guys can see what they're, they've got going here. The other thing, and everybody just yells and screams and loves listing book because the client can get back to them, the client can do this, the client, and they can't, and they hate this. Well, let me show you something that a lot of people don't know about. Here again, when you act as the client, this is what they can do. Upper left-hand corner, I've got something that says map and search. Okay. By clicking that on, and remember, I'm the client, you guys. I can actually go ahead and ask <coughs> the client and set up my own search perimeter. This is just very similar to listing book. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to add a max, 600,000. I'm going to add a minimum number of bedrooms here, four. Um, whatever else you've got going on here. Ask, this is not you, the agent, it's the client. 
I'm looking for residential. And I'm going to go up here and I'm going to draw out an area. They can actually draw out an area. But they have to do everything to search them out. They don't have to do everything. You set them up with an auto email. They have the option of doing it. Okay. Just like they would in listing book. They're going to go ahead and click save. And they're going to name their search. And I click OK. Now, the next thing this lets me do, if I go back to the display, your client has the option of seeing it either as a map or as a list. So I'm going to go down here to public one line. That's the default, so it's back to that, the way they saw it when they opened it. See, these are important things. My client from here can go ahead and select items. See on the left, I've got two hearts now. This one's a possibility. They can delete. What else can they do that's like listing book? I'm going to click on... Send a message. They can send you a message. Add note. And off it goes. Now, you can view all of this stuff when you're in Matrix as the agent as well. So I'm going to go home and we're going to go over a couple more things. So that was the client's view. I'm going to click this really quick. Okay. This widget is called Recent Use Contacts. These are contacts that you have recently used. Duh. You've either set them up as a new client, so you can see there I've got Chris Columbus. I just set him up. I've sent him an email. His boat's sinking. <laughs> I've set him up in an automatic email. Okay. Or I've set up a saved search and I've connected his name with that search. So it is a contact that I've used. From here, I can also, by clicking on their name, actually update or view my client's activities. Let me get to one that's a little more active here. So we're going to go to Peter Cottontail. There he is. No, I know. I have weird clients. Now, you're going to notice in Peter Cottontail's file of information, portal activity. That means that Peter has actually opened his portal seven times. Portal searches. He's actually done something in his portal. He set up his own search. How many automatic emails do I have set up for him? Four. Four. But this is the part, if I were you guys, I'd be concerned with. Now, Peter's looks like he's been doing it a lot, but what have I got going here? 304 sent emails. And he hasn't figured something out yet? He's just looky-looky. Yeah, he's a looky-look. How do we find out the information that's in here? By clicking. So each of these tells me what went to him. Click. If it's blue, click it. It all builds and leads to more information. The other thing that it allows me to do with Peter is I can delete him as a contact. So you can get rid of him all together. I can edit his contact information. I can view his portal. Or if I've used any cart, put anything in a cart, I can open his cart from here. Now, recent portal visitors. These are the clients that I have either set an email, an automatic email to, 
or I have sent a direct email link to. There's three ways to send an email to your client from Matrix. And I'm going to show you in just a second here. The first one is an automatic email. You've set up a search with all of their criteria and you have designated certain days that they're going to be receiving criteria updates from you. When they open their email, it will appear in recent portal visitors. You can also set them up with a direct link. So maybe there, you haven't put a criteria in for them, but there's listings that you're sending to them individually. If you send them as a link, they remain dynamic with Matrix, which means they continue to update. They're still connected to the system. So when they open that email, they're opening it in their portal. The third way to send an email is to send them a PDF report. This will not re appear in your recent portal visitors, nor will you be able to track whether or not they've opened it. If you do not enter an email that you are sending to a client as a contact, there will be no history for that particular email. They have got to be set up as a contact for the history to stay with them. So, at 10.45, Katie went into her portal by clicking on the number three. This was the one we just did. She chose two as favorites and one as a possibility. She also, it appears from here, sent me a note. By clicking on the note, it's going to take me to the listing that she has identified, that she sent a note with. I'm going to click it, and I can respond to her. So the next time she opens her portal, there's going to be a note back from me. So that's pretty cool. All right. So let's go over how we can set up emails for our client. Oh, let's go up here to search. I'm going to go to CMA because you know, guys all know it's my favorite search. We're only looking for active single family residents. Uh, give me a zip code here in Northridge. 91324. And what's the ceiling price, Rodney? Ceiling? Yeah, six hundred, seven hundred. Six hundred dollars, six hundred. That's a good ceiling. <laughs> yeah, quickly. All right. Stuff, but it's cool. So I'm going to go ahead and click results. Now, obviously, you guys get in much more detail, but I'm going to go ahead and I am going to email specific listings to my client. In order to activate the toolbar to do that, you need to select items. How many do I have checked? Three. Three. Do I need to get rid of anything? Do I need to delete anything, refine it? Do I need to do anything other than check them? Yeah, you can no. put out an email if you're emailing. If I'm good enough, that's all I need to do. So I'm going to email these as a link. Email. This is going to go to Christopher Columbus, so I start typing his name. I click it on. It's in there. Always CC.